Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am back with a new video and today I want to share with you the reasons that made me stop believing in Christianity, stop believing in Jesus, peace be upon him, to be a deity. It's, I guess, the closest you can get right now to my revert journey. There's a lot of things uh, about my revert story that I don't feel comfortable sharing at the moment. But this uh, particular topic <laughs> I really want to share with you guys because it really opened my eyes uh, to the faith I was saying I belong to that I hadn't really dared to question. And by questioning I mean that of course, when I started researching Islam, I decided I was going to properly research uh, the religion. I also got to question Christianity with an unbiased mind. And I also, of course, questioned Islam because I, was, I wanted to know what the answers were. But for me, the answers I got from Islam by questioning, questioning these things made more sense and made me at ease and I felt they were logical compared to the answers I would get from studying Christianity. And this video is in no way, form or shape, uh, bashing Christians, not at all. You know, my parents are Christian, they are very practicing Christians, and they are someone I look up to because they're kind, they you know, follow the commandments, they are very, very good people. So it's not me questioning Christians or their, whatever they do or I um, don't think they're bad people, anything like that. I just, it's the theology, the religion itself, that for me didn't make sense. So there's a lot of things, obviously, that happened in my head and in my brain when I was researching Islam and I kind of stopped believing in Christianity and stopped believing that Jesus, peace upon him, is a deity. But I'm going to keep it, try to keep it a bit short. I could probably make a series out of this because there were a lot of things. Um, but with that being said, uh, let's get started. For me personally, when I started doubting that Jesus was a deity and doubting Christianity as a as the true religion, it was a turning point for me. Obviously, I would say. Um, <laughs> it was a big turning point and also something I was very nervous about telling my parents because I was updating them along as I studied Islam. But one of the things that made it very clear to me and really made me ponder about, say, the biblical stories and just question Christianity is the way the Bible uh, talks about or describes the prophets, peace be upon them. So first, prophethood is a noble title, you know, being a prophet is a noble thing. You are the messenger of God. So why would not God choose the messengers to be people of good character that are free of major sin? Like, of course, there are humans, they commit small sins and they repent, um, but they are free of major sins. That is at least the case in the Quran in Islam, but the biblical stories tells a very different uh, story about them. And reading the comparisons of the stories of some of the prophets, peace upon them, that I will mention now, seeing that the Bible describes them doing and committing major sins, when these people are supposed to be, you know, the chosen people that God has given the message to, so we can look up to them because they're also fellow human beings. So this is where I kind of like, hmm, I'm. This kind of doesn't make sense to me. Dayan. <laughs> Sorry, I, I couldn't, yeah. So these stories of the prophets that I will shortly mention, uh, I got from, I first uh, saw in a video that I will link down below that it just describes it and compares the stories very, uh, very nicely. So it's kind of me like retelling some of that, but obviously uh, talking about my own experience, but I won't m mention it all, but please watch that video as well because it's really, it's really good. So the first prophet I'll be talking about is Prophet David. And in the biblical story in 
Samuel, Second Samuel. I'm not sure how to pronounce these um, uh, names in English because I'm used to the Norwegian translations. But this here, uh, you can read about Prophet David, peace upon him, and basically the accusations of adultery and murder. And those are clearly major sins. The story goes uh, in the Bible that Prophet David sees a beautiful woman bathing. He goes to her, sleeps with her, and she becomes pregnant. He then gets her husband killed, and God, in the Bible, Bible version, uh, strikes the baby with an illness, a fatal illness, so the baby dies. So already here, you know, a prophet, which is supposed to be a noble person with good characteristics, is committing a major sin. Not even one, but two, like adultery and murder. And there's also a contradiction here that happens, a contradiction of justice that the Bible clearly says, and I have to write down, in Deuteronomy 24 uh, verse 16, where the Bible says, parents are not to be put to death for their children, uh, nor children put to death for their parents. Each will die for their own sin. And this contradicts that. God punished a child which was innocent for the actions of the parents. And in the Quran, this doesn't happen. Amongst the several stories of Prophet David, peace be upon him, you know, he rather makes a mistake by he's judging a dis dispute between two parties and he makes a mistake and he realizes this and it was all a test from Allah and he repents and, and he asks for forgiveness. So the story in the Quran, the Islamic version of Prophet David, peace upon him, portrays him in a noble light as a prophet should. So another story is about Prophet Noah, peace be upon him. So after the flood, uh, he realizes that his son uh, drowned, or one of his sons drowned. And instead of turning towards Allah, which he does in the Quran, and you know turns to him with sadness and prays, in the biblical version, he plants a vineyard and gets drunk. And it just made me think, like, what kind of... <laughs> this is not... The characteristics of a prophet. This, like, the prophet should be people that we look up to, that we want to be like. And also, it kind of doesn't make sense for me again that a prophet that had the the strength, the self discipline to build an ark, does not have the discipline, or does not have the strength to rather seek for Allah but get drunk. And drinking alcohol is also a sin. It's also not okay in Christianity. But yeah, I do recommend watching the video I linked below because it has more stories about the prophets, the biblical and the Quranic versions of the stories compared. And you will clearly see that the Quranic stories actually portrays the prophets, peace upon them, in a noble light. They have good characteristics. They are clearly the chosen people of God to convey uh, the message. So that being said, you know, this is something that I'm sure people can find a way to overlook, to make excuses for it. For me personally, I, I couldn't do that. It didn't sit right with me. But then there's more to Christianity than, you know, just uh, the prophets, peace upon them. And that is, of course, the Trinity that one plus one plus one is one, and that Jesus, peace upon him, is son of God. This is something that I, I have realized when thinking about it, <laughs> that I didn't really believe. I would always pray to God, but I wouldn't pray to Jesus. And if I did pray to or through Jesus, it was because someone told me to or like I was praying with someone and they prayed through Jesus. I'm going to quote a couple of verses in the Bible that made me realize that is there really any proof in Christianity in the Bible that Jesus is son of God? And one of those is from Matthew where 
someone came to Jesus peace upon him and asked him good master what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life and Jesus peace upon him uh, responded with why do you call me good he asked there is none good but one that is God and then he said to get eternal life to get paradise heaven uh, keep the commandments and here already he says keep the commandments the commandments is thou shalt not steal thou shalt not kill thou shalt not commit adultery two things that one prophet has already done in the in the bible and also jesus did not say to get eternal life to be saved believe in me because that's what christianity is all about that's what i've been told my whole life as long as you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, all is good. <laughs> you will enter heaven. And when I really started thinking about this, it didn't sit right with me because Jesus is not saying, when someone asks him, how do I get to heaven? He doesn't say, believe in me, worship me. He says, keep the commandments, follow the commandments. And this brings me to the point that I don't feel like you have consequences. There is less justice according to Christianity, uh, Christian beliefs, uh, compared to Islam. And by that I mean, as long as you believe in the Trinity, as long as you believe that Jesus died on the cross, I was told this my whole life, the Lord, the Lord Jesus is your savior. And as long as you believe that, you know, you will enter heaven. But then I'm thinking, because I've always been very, I've always been thinking about consequences. I'm very much like that. I like to plan consequences, if I do this or that, whatever it may be, uh, I think consequences. And by just believing that, it's almost like you can just do whatever. I'm not saying Christians do whatever and just think I'm fine, I can murder someone. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying the theology part of it, the actual religions, basically says you can do whatever but as long as you believe that Jesus died for you you will go to heaven and again that didn't sit well with me because in Islam there are consequences for your actions and even if you've been the worst person ever and you've done horrible things Allah can still forgive you we don't know which is the good part that we don't know who he's going to forgive and he can even forgive all sins except from shirk, uh, even if you haven't repented. But and even if you have committed shirk and you have repented, Allah can also still forgive that. That is true mercy. That is that is merciful. But in Christianity, as long as you just believe that Jesus is your savior, you will go to heaven. But there's that kind of means makes it sound like there are no consequences for your actions. You can be the most horrible person on earth and as long as you believe that, you will still go to heaven. And to me that does not sit right. It did not feel like justice. And it's also this, the consequences that we have in Islam and the mercy of Allah that makes us want to follow the commandments, you know, that makes us want to be better people better Muslims because there are consequences to our actions. So I kind of <laughs> went off there, but I wanted to mention one more thing from the Bible, which is from Matthew 26, 39. And this is happening after the Last Supper. Jesus got to the Garden of Gethsemane and fell on his face and prayed. And I remember as a kid in Sunday school, I would hear this and I would think, one, why is he praying to himself, to God? Again, you know, it, it wasn't like the logic didn't hit me. <laughs> there was no logic there for me. But also, he prayed with his face on the ground. And as a kid, when I you know that these this story was read out loud, I remember thinking, why don't we pray like that? 
Why do we pray differently? Like we don't pray with our foreheads on the ground, but Muslims do. <laughs> so this was kind of the last, I don't know, like I didn't need to do further research because I already felt in my heart that Jesus cannot be the son of God. It just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't, it's not logical. And if anyone who watched, watches this and you feel that it's logical, that is up to you. I'm not here to fight anyone about it. I'm not going to fight in the comments at all. I have no time for that, but this is my story. So yeah, these were the things that, yeah, made me disbelieve in Christianity. And I don't know, I feel kind of sad because of my parents. I don't want them to, like my mom knows, obviously, like my parents know I have a YouTube channel, but I know that they're sad, I'm not believing in Jesus, I don't believe uh, in Christianity, I know that that makes them sad. So making this video is also is something that I know might make my parents sad, I don't know if they're going to watch it, <laughs> but I also obviously want them to question their faith, um, because I obviously believe Islam to be the true religion. So with that being said, I hope this was helpful, hope this was beneficial, interesting for you guys. I hope you guys have had a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.